Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. This is going to be a much more serious topic, and let's just dive right into it. The title pretty much says it all. This is 2 Kings chapter 13, starting in verse 14. Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he would die. I'm not even going to finish reading the verse. The greatest miracle worker, because he had a double portion of Elijah's spirit. Elisha, the greatest miracle worker, potentially on par with or possibly even greater than Moses. Well, he didn't part any seas, and he didn't bring the Israelites out of the land of Egypt. But nonetheless, the amount of miracles that he did and the things that he did do are pretty amazing. They're still ridiculously awesome. So if maybe not greater than Moses, at least second place. As far as miracles and mighty works go, he died of sickness. So, and I'm not saying, I'm not downplaying anyone's battle with cancer. I'm not downplaying the common cold he might have picked up from some annoying co-worker. I'm not downplaying the fights that people, you know, that are missing a limb or are blind or deaf or mute are going through. I'm not downplaying any of that. I will say you can't always expect God to heal you. You can't always expect miracles. And if you're a non-believer and somehow you come across this, you can't. Just say, well, if your God's real, why doesn't he heal you? Sometimes he just doesn't do that. Sometimes it really isn't his will. If one of his chief servants who raised the dead died of a sickness, you can't tell me it's always God's will to heal. And that it's always God's will that everyone feel fine and great and dandy because that's not how this world works. It's not how the Bible world works either. And it's just, this is a bit of a pet peeve of mine. And I'm a little bit heated on it because I'm sick and tired of atheists saying that, you know, if your God's real, why isn't this world a better place? Because of sin. If God is willing to throw people into hell, how much more is he willing to kill them and make them sick? And even his own people. Look at Job who lost everything and suffered with boils all over his body. And here this servant of, and he didn't do anything wrong. To the best of our knowledge, Elisha didn't do anything wrong. And he died of his sickness. And I also get tired of Christians moaning and groaning, well, why isn't my life better? Why isn't God doing this or that for me? Why am I suffering through this or that problem or illness? God is not a genie. He doesn't just, you know, see what we're going through and like, oh, you poor little thing, let me make it all better. No. We're sinners. And we're children. We will suffer for the sins we've committed, and we need to grow up. And we're going to go through hard times, sometimes when we haven't done anything wrong. And what we should do, and I can use this video later on as a testimony, by all means, if I start griping and moaning and groaning later on about something being unfair, remind me of this video, y'all. God isn't there to just make everything all right and make everything okay. He is there for us through the hard times as we suffer for the sins we've committed and as we are growing up and going through tests, and being deepened and strengthened in our faith. That's not just a Christian cliche. That's a real thing. So stop complaining about the problem that you're having and believe that God is good and that He is right there and that He hasn't abandoned you. Being sick or being poor is not a sign of God's abandonment. I'm like, there, there's not even a, there isn't a sign of His abandonment. The only reason God wouldn't come to you or be with you is because you won't let him. Because you haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Or, if you are a Christian, if you're living in sin. If you're going through a hard time, God's right there. If you're dying of cancer, God is right there. Don't give up your faith. Don't stop believing in him. And don't give up. He's right there. I will read one more verse out of this. Verse 20, Then Elisha died, and they buried him. And the raiding bands from Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. So it was, as they were burying a man, that suddenly they spied a band of raiders, and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. So even in his death via sickness, his dead body was used by God. And God can use your suffering and your pain. Just like he used Elisha's bones. Just like he used, oh, I don't know, the death of our God, Jesus, on the cross. So, glad I got that off my chest. 
I love you guys very, very much. And this is something that I've want. I'm kind of glad I got to this chapter. This is something I've wanted to say for a really long time. Make sure to share this video with someone you know. If they're griping, moaning, groaning, complaining about things like this, it's a bit of a kick in the teeth. And quite frankly, it's a necessary one. God's not a genie. We are his servants, not the other way around. I love you, and God bless.